the greatest thing was being on stage and having the control. The awe of being worshipped and having folks just really look at you and say, wow, you know, I want to be that. As leader of a heavy metal band, Kirk Martin projected an angry, wild image on stage. And getting just thousands of people to scream profanities, that was the biggest rush for me. Off stage, people just found him mean. I was so filled with hate that I, I would project that hate in a lot of people. Two of the, the band members, when we were on the road, just decided they were just sick of me and they couldn't take me anymore and they actually decided to leave the band. But the message in Kirk's music captured the minds of his young audience. My whole intention was to tell people to believe in yourself, follow your own visions, your own dreams, and crush whoever's in your way. Kirk had no illusions about where his growing success came from. I got on the ground and I clawed the earth. I told Satan, I said, if you give me what I want, if you make me a god, if you give me the women and the drugs and the fame, and..." and everything and you give me the power to crush people I will serve you until the end of time within two days I was offered a recording contract while Kirk pushed for fame and fortune he tried to keep a secret bottled up inside a couple of older boys in the neighborhood started molesting me and sodomizing me when I was probably about to eight it uh, happened more than once and I never talked about it I never I never told anybody about it Later, taking advantage of women sexually became part of Kirk's heavy metal lifestyle. The worst part about my molestation was the fact that I, in turn, went out and violated others. Then, just as he was about to sign the record deal for which he'd sold his soul, he had an encounter with a mysterious stranger. One morning at about 9 o'clock, I went into a small cafe, and this guy came and sat down right across from me. Out of all the places he could have sat, there were plenty of seats open. And immediately I looked at him with this horrible, mean-looking look on my face, and I said, what's happening, Dad? And uh, he stopped stirring his coffee again and looked at me right in the face, and he said, what's happening, Dad? I jumped across the table and I put my nose right up to his, stared him in the eye and I just cursed him. I called him every foul thing I could think of and he said, God sent me here to tell you that he loves you and God wants you to know that he was not responsible for the young men that molested you when you were a young child and the thing that was so mind-blowing about that is he used their names. And he said, Jesus is waiting for you to turn your face towards home. And I jumped up and chased after him, and he went around the corner of the building, and into thin air he disappeared. Not long after that, Kirk was sleeping in his band's tour bus when it shook violently in the middle of the night. Suddenly, it was like this big, shining spotlight came down from heaven, and the Spirit of God Himself came into the bus. And, and I, I didn't know why I hated God so much. Everything just slipped away, and, and the only thing I felt was love. I felt, I felt accepted. I felt, I felt like I was that little boy again before I got molested. I said, Jesus, change me or destroy me because I don't want to be this anymore. I realize now that in the presence of God, sin and hate and, and ugliness can't there's no room for it it has to leave and all these things began to leave my my heart Kirk cried himself to sleep and when he woke up the next morning everything seemed different the grass was greener the sky was was fluffier the clouds were beautiful and and I was different Kirk never signed the contract for the heavy metal record deal I had everything in my hand everything I'd ever wanted just just sitting right there and all of a sudden, I, I didn't want it anymore. And I left everything and never went back. Kirk found a church in his hometown and began to grow as a Christian. A Christian counselor also urged him to seek out the young men who had molested him and forgive them. I did find him. I don't know if you remember me or not. And I said, why did you do this to me? And then they began to tell me the story of how someone had violated them. The one young boy, uh, how, how he had found a pornography magazine and that's what 
led him to abuse me and then invite the other boy to abuse me. They had given their hearts to Christ. We sat down and we cried and we hugged and we talked about it and we prayed. That's how I got past all that. Over time, he found his musical talent moving in a new direction, writing and performing worship songs. He and his family travel around the country sharing the miracle that changed Kirk's life. My wife is just a treasure. My family is the greatest testimony of God's mercy and God's grace because I thought I would never have such a wonderful blessing. Once I started to realize that God wasn't out to get me, I, I started to see the blessings. I was addicted to drugs and sex and violence and hatred and, and used music as a tool to destroy people. And then God turned all that around for His glory.